I'm in central Washington today, so we can take a look at some volcanoes. But first, let me just do a real quick gear check. All right, got a waterproof backpack mm -hmm. and rain gear, of course. This is the Pacific Northwest, after all. Always bring a mineral ID book, just in case I find something new and exciting. Of course, maps, rock hammer, some water, bear spray, and a bear bell, because we will be in bear territory today. Stick that on the side there. Trekking poles, water shoes, because it's wet in the Pacific Northwest, and there's always a water crossing or two, so we'll just clip these on the outside of the pack. And of course, the hound's coming with, so I got some water dishes and treats. Let's go. And now you might be wondering, the U.S. has volcanoes? Yes, it actually does. And sometimes the next question is, yeah, but real volcanoes, as in active volcanoes? Yeah, they actually are. North America actually contains a large portion of the world's volcanoes, and a large portion of those are found within U.S. boundaries. Keep in mind when we say U.S. boundaries, that includes places like Alaska and Hawaii, which, of course, Alaska and Hawaii are very volcanically active regions for different geologic reasons. Okay, fair enough, but there aren't active volcanoes in mainland America, right? Yep, there actually are. We are standing in Washington State here along a chain of volcanoes that runs roughly 800 miles or about 1,300 kilometers from southern British Columbia, Canada, all the way down to Northern California. If we could take a view from space, we would see that we are on a line called the Pacific Ring of Fire. And this is a predictable pattern of volcanism and earthquake activity that is the result of plate tectonics. These volcanoes are found here because of what's called a subduction zone, a place where one plate dives under the other. Imagine we have two rugs and they're moving towards one another. Maybe we're pushing them or they're on a conveyor belt that's forcing them towards one another. What happens when they meet? Well, the rugs represent the tectonic plates, the crust and part of the upper mantle. So they slide fairly easily, but when they meet, they can either push into one another and push upward, which is what forms mountains, or they can meet and one slides under the other plate. That's what we have going on here. As the oceanic plate dives down, it experiences increased heat and pressure and it releases water and that results in melted rock. And that's what leads to the volcanoes we see today in the Cascade Arc. But the volcanoes we see today are just the latest phase of volcanism associated with this plate movement. Volcanism in the Arc actually began about 37 million years ago. There were older volcanoes, but now they're just volcanic remnants. Most of the present day Cascade volcanoes are less than 2 million years old. There's actually a lot of cool stuff going on around here. Triple plate boundary, there's a huge fault off the western coast of North America that has been compared to the ones that caused tsunamis. There's ghost forests, lava caves, rocks that float, and active volcanoes. And that's all thanks to plate collisions happening right now, just a little west of us off the coast of western North America. Now I'd say that's worth hiking up a mountain for, so let's take a closer look. Hey, just a real quick message from me, Heather, the host here at Let's Go Geo. Actually, I am host, videographer, photographer, editor, creator, all that stuff. This channel is run solely by me, and I started it because I do love geology and all things related to the topic, and I love teaching, and I thought it would be a great way to bring to people that in the field experience, but digitally. So Let's Go Geo was born. The project's going well, but I have a lot of great other ideas. So if you want to help me out, support me, and help the project move along, you can find me on Patreon, and you can become a fan there as well as get access to exclusive content. So head over to Patreon. Otherwise, let's get back to today's topic. Whew. It's humid out today. Might be some rain coming, but I am prepared. So okay, I'm trudging through this stuff. This is... um. Lots of huckleberries in here. Yum, but they're not ready yet. They are delicious. There's some strawberries. There's some fireweed here. 
fireweed grows in disturbed areas. So logged areas, uh, other disturbances could include fires or volcanic eruptions. After the most recent eruption of Mount St. Helens, geologists and ecologists flocked to the area so they could see the aftermath of the volcanic eruption. Botanists were thrilled to see the succession of plants that sprouted up pretty much the year after the eruption. And geologists were humbled by one particular volcanic hazard. The ash plumes and the lava flows, they get all the attention. But it turns out there's another hazard. And we found out in the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption that the issue that we should be paying more attention to are the lahars. I should be crossing a logging road here soon. Oh, all right, there's that road. So lahars are basically debris flows. They're this slurry of ash and volcanic debris and melted ice and snow that comes cascading down the volcano. Lahars are actually a really big risk factor when it comes to these cascade volcanoes. And that's because they are covered in glaciers. Rainier has over 20 glaciers and Adams is also covered in glaciers. When and if Rainier erupts anytime soon, it will be a huge risk factor for places like Tacoma, particularly for these lahars. If you want to assess the risk of these volcanoes, it's best to just look at a map of the drainage patterns around the volcanic peak. Let's head up a little further and see if we can get a little better view of these volcanoes. It's been a while since this has been logged. These trees are a lot taller, not as much sun getting down here a lot cooler. I'd say this is a good spot for a break. These streams and rivulets, they'll work their way down to the main water bodies, the rivers. Those waterways will swell and breach their banks. They can take out roads and bridges. It's catastrophic to pretty much anything or anyone in its way. And it can be pretty far reaching too. Whoops. Well, good news. This is actually completely waterproof. And now's a good time to talk about our sponsor today, Breakwater Supply. They make waterproof gear like this 100% waterproof backpack. Getting footage of geologic wonders is a fun, rewarding adventure. But many of the clips I need take me to some rugged backcountry settings where I'm vulnerable to the elements. Through the epic canyon lands of Utah. Storms are coming. Those rains will be refreshing. In thick forests that stay damp all year in the Pacific Northwest. Did you know the United States contains a true rainforest? And sometimes even across waterways. Eh, it's not so bad. I usually carry gear with me that I don't want wet. Dry clothes, rock hammer, scintillator, books and maps, and a phone. I've really benefited from having a durable 100% waterproof breakwater supply backpack to stow away my gear. So when I finally get to my destination, my most important things are totally safe and dry. All right, sun's out and we got a nice day. If you'd like to get some breakwater gear, check for my link in the description and use code Let's Go Geo for 10% off. Well, that was a good break. Come on, girl, let's go. Okay, it's getting hot out and the bugs are showing up, but we have made it to the road. So let's just go out here and take this road for a little while. Let's see what we find. These roads are covered in pumice. So pumice is basically this stuff right here. You can see this. This is what the roads are covered with. Pumice is basically, it's an extrusive volcanic rock and you can think of it as a frothy rhyolite. So that means it is very silica rich rock. So this is probably a piece of Mount St. Helens pumice, pretty likely because if we were standing here in the 1980 eruption, we would have been right in the line of fire or pumice. And there we have it. One of the first cascade volcanic views today. Let's make sure that's in. That is Mount Rainier. That is one of the biggest, that is the tallest cascade volcano and one of the best. Although I guess that's an opinion. If you guys have a favorite volcano of the cascade range, drop it in the comments and tell me why it's your favorite. We'll see what we come up with. It is over 14,000 feet. A close second would be Mount Shasta, which is also over 14,000 feet. I actually see some little peaking of the volcanoes over there. So if we get a little higher, I think we'll be able to see some more of these Cascade Range volcanoes. So 
Let's keep going. There are over 20 of these volcanoes in the Cascade Range, and there's thousands of other volcanic vents and volcanic related features. Now, they all have their own personalities, Rainier and Shasta being some of the tallest. Mount Adams is a pretty big volcano. Uh, St. Helens is very active. The Newberry and Medicine Lakes volcanoes, which are big shield volcanoes, very broad. All right, there we go. Another Cascade Range volcano. That is Mount Adams. That is uh, over 12,000 feet tall and also covered with glaciers. Pretty cool to see. Um, if we, so that is to the south of us right now. If we were to continue south and kind of head down into Oregon, the other Cascade volcanoes we could run into include Mount Hood and Three Sisters, the Newberry Volcano. We could go all down through to California and then we would find uh, Shasta, which is also over 14,000 feet, and Mount Lassen, which even erupted in the 1900s. Um, but I think we're just going to head up a little higher still, and we'll find some better views, hopefully, of maybe some more Cascade volcanoes. So let's go. All right, so it's a little hazy today, but if you look right in that saddle there, you see a peak sticking up. That's actually Mount Hood to the south of us. It's kind of a pyramidal shape. It's the one I said looks a little bit like the Grinch's Mount Crumpet if you get it from the right angle. That is a volcano located in Oregon. All right, guys, I do see St. Helens. We found it. Um, but I'm going to keep walking up further and see if we can't find more of a clearing in the trees. And then hopefully we can get a little better view of it. Oh, Pooch! He's back there. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Hanging out. He's having a good time today. We've got some decent weather. The bugs are in and out of, of bothering me, but oh, there it is. Mount St. Helens. So if I were standing here in 1980 when it erupted, pretty much probably be dead because the ash plume and all the material came this way. There's, again, there's pumice just covering the ground here. So there are other volcanic hazards though to consider with these, all the Cascade volcanoes, and they can range from the lava flows, the pyroclastic flows, the, um, the ash plume I already mentioned, and then, you know, obviously air quality becomes an issue then too and then the lahars we talked about. Okay, now the bugs are getting bad. Let me go down and grab some pumice real quick. All right, so these volcanoes, for the most part, tend to be more on the silica-rich end of the magma chemistry scale. So many of them are made up of a lot of rhyolite, sometimes dacite and andesite, Glacier Peak, it's more on the decite end of the scale. These volcanoes tend to be more silica rich. When we compare them, say, to the volcanoes that you think of in Hawaii, those are more on the basaltic end of the scale. That is less viscous. So that magma tends to flow and have far reaching consequences. This stuff in contrast, this silica rich, uh, high in volatiles and, and you know, gases, this very viscous, thick, like molasses magma, will basically get shaken up and pop. That's how these volcanoes work. I think we're gonna gear up and get on out of here because the bugs are terrible here. I hope you guys enjoyed the view of Mount St. Helens. All right, see if we get a clearing here. And there's a much better view of Mount Rainier. So that's Mount Rainier, it's over 14,000 feet. This is actually a really cool view in person. It's amazing looking. Mount Rainier is to the north of us right now. If we would continue to the north, we would discover some more volcanoes in the Cascade Range. That includes Glacier Peak, which we talked about, that's our Decite volcano, and Mount Baker near the Canadian border, and then on into Canada, there's more volcanoes, Mount Meager, uh, Garibaldi, and some of the other Canadian cascade volcanoes. Uh, there's different types of eruptions and different chemistry that has occurred in the history of each volcano. So we can find, in addition to rhyolite, decite, andesite, and even some basalt. The cascade volcanoes go through different eruptive phases. So sometimes they're a little more active and sometimes they're kind of quiet. In the last 4,000 years, the pattern has been 
a few to tens of eruptions each century for the various volcanoes. In the last 200 years, there have been eruptions at Lassen and Shasta in California, Hood in Oregon, Mount St. Helens, of course, as well as Baker, Mount Baker, and Glacier Peak in Washington State, and even Mount Rainier. If you'd like to learn more about Mount Rainier, check out my video all on Mount Rainier. I did a very in-depth video. We talked about why the lahars are such a huge risk factor and why Tacoma is in the line of fire. So geologists actually monitor the Cascade volcanoes pretty heavily, especially after the Mount St. Helens 1980 eruption. They use some pretty cool technology to monitor these volcanoes. This includes monitoring the movement of magma and the earthquakes, as well as those lahars. Based upon the eruptive history and the distance to population centers, they periodically put out these assessments on the risk of the volcanoes and they rate them. In 2018, they did an assessment and they designated nine of the volcanoes in Washington and Oregon as a rating of either high or very high. And those volcanoes in include Crater Lake, Glacier Peak, Mount Baker, Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, the Newberry, and Three Sisters volcanoes, as well as Mount Adams. All right, well, that was a bit of a long day. Big hike today, but we did get some good views. Pretty happy about that um, and decent weather. So it was a little hazy, but good views of some of those Cascade volcanoes. And now I think it's time to head back down the mountain pretty tired. I'd like to get a little more food. And I think the pups are pretty tired too. So I'm just gonna just head back down and call it a day. I hope you enjoyed today's look at the Cascade Range. We will be talking more about other Cascade volcanoes here. Um, I will be covering as many, hopefully eventually all of them here at Let's Go Geo. So I hope you will join me on the next adventure. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, as I build this virtual Let's Go Geo project, then head on over to Patreon and you can become a patron. I have some behind scenes and exclusive content that I can share there. And otherwise, I will see you guys on the next adventure. It's a good day of rock hounding.